Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to be covering something that I've gotten several questions about, and that is how to set up a basic development environment on your Ubuntu workstation. Now, if you need help setting up a basic environment, you're probably pretty new to Linux and programming as a whole, and you're probably just starting to realize that to be a good system administrator or platform engineer or infrastructure engineer or automation engineer or DevOps engineer or whatever the hell they're calling it now, to be good at this, you need to have a firm grasp of software development and programming. And to do that, you need to be automating, programming, scripting things on your own. And to do that, you need to pick a language and get your workstation set up so that you can start playing around, learning things, building things. So in this video, this is the prerequisite for all the language setup tutorials I'm going to do. All that I'm going to cover here is a base workstation setup for a very easy to learn development environment. It's not language specific, so you can use this whether you're starting with Python or with Ruby uh, or with C or Go, or Perl, whatever. So we're gonna be covering a few things. First, uh, we're gonna install a very useful uh, package that's gonna help us uh, be able to compile our own software. Um, occasionally you need this for language libraries, extensions, headers, that kind of stuff. Then we're going to install a text editor. This is a an almost religious debate on which text editor to start with or which is the best or whatever. We're going to take a very simple answer here without getting too much into the religion wars about text editors. We're going to install uh, Git for basic version control and we're going to install Z shell which is a shell that can be a little bit nicer than bash for some things. So without further ado Let's get started. By the end of this video, you're going to have sort of a development environment that's comfortable to work in, ready to go, and on top of this, you can install whatever language environment you're interested in. Okay, we're going to do a sudo apt-get update to grab the latest packages. And then you can do a sudo apt-get install build essential. Now this is a meta package. I've already got it installed here. But what it basically will do is go ahead and install that, and you'll have a C compiler, a C++ compiler, uh, GNU Make, and a few other tools. So this is like a meta package that installs a bunch of stuff that you'll need to build C and C++ programs. It's used in, like if you install something like Ruby or Python, if you install some libraries for those languages, occasionally you'll have to compile those libraries from C code yourself this is a useful way of not having to deal with that down the road. You just take care of it in your workstation setup. Here are the details on that package, by the way. You can see what that's actually pointing to. So C++, C, uh, dev libraries and header files, GNU Make, and some Debian dev tools. Next, we're going to download a text editor. Now, this is, I'm not joking when I say this is a debate that if you just substituted editor names for deities, it would be a religious debate. You've got usually Emacs versus Vim, but I'm not going to make you choose one now. You should be familiar with both, and if it were up to me, you would, you would start with something like VI or Vim, just to be sure to get around every terminal that you uh, remotely connect to, and then at some point when you're developing software, you would graduate to like Emacs, if that was your thing. For now, we're going to just cut that entire debate short, and I'm going to tell you, just grab Sublime Text. So sublimetext.com slash three, we're just going to actually manually download this, I'm not going to screw around with adding like a PPA or anything to Ubuntu. So this will literally just grab a deb archive and stick it in downloads and we're going to go ahead and just install that when it's done. So we'll say dpackage install as root sublime text. You can just tab complete that. Okay, it's installed and it will create a uh, shortcut, maybe that's even the binary, at subl, so sublime and that's just a nice quick way of referring to it. I'm using i3, whatever graphical or window manager you use, that's fine. I'm just going to start it with subl, and here we go. 
Yay! And we don't have to deal with the whole Emacs Vim thing. Here, here's just a quick side note. Here's the reason I'm not recommending Vim or I'm not recommending Emacs right now. If you're just getting started with Linux, and then a couple months later you get into programming, or maybe it's the other way around, it doesn't matter. You're just about to start shoveling an enormous amount of information into your brain. A lot of that information is going to seem really confusing while you're learning it, and the last thing you need is another fucking enormous learning curve stacked on top of those two learning curves, right? Like, it's hard enough if you don't have to think about text editing to just learn Linux and to just learn the basics of programming. The last thing you want is to also make your text editor hellishly difficult to use for, oh, I don't know, the first six months. And that really is the learning curve. Like, until you're super productive with Emacs or Vim, if you're also doing other things and not literally dedicating all your free time to learning them, it's a several month process until you're really worked into those, until you're really efficient. So just don't torture yourself. You're already learning enough. It's already kind of crazy enough. Once you're solid on Linux, once you're solid with the basics of programming and software development, then, you know, as another add-on project, then maybe look at Vim. Then maybe look at setting up an Emacs environment for development. But for now, this is your text editor, Sublime Text. So um, I'm not going to cover all the basic features or anything here. Uh, a couple of the things I really love are, if you hold down um, Control, you can get multiple cursors going. Uh, this can be super useful uh, for deleting or writing things. Love that feature. The other thing that I really like is that it's got packages for just about everything. You can install something called package control, which has now been integrated into the editor before you used to have to like go into the Python console for the editor and paste some stuff in. Basically what you'll do is hit control shift P type in the word package like I just did, and then it'll show you install package control. You can just select that. I've just done that. So the next thing you will want to do is install a package. So hit enter there. Again, that's control shift P to open that menu. And you can see that here are the packages we can install. How about uh, syntax highlighting for Ansible? Please look at the docs for this once you start using it. Uh, but basically, the, the point is you can start using this as a normal text editor right away with no learning curve. And that's why I recommend it. Our next tool is Git. Git is a version control system. And it's not installed by default. So we'll say sudo apt get install git-core. And that'll install all the Git stuff that we need for a basic version control. Git is fairly complex. It's got a learning curve of its own. If you are going to do any real software development, I highly recommend that you just start using Git like pretty much as soon as you start creating any kind of software that's important to you. What Git lets you do is track changes to your software so that you can kind of edit in a no-risk environment, especially as software grows, that becomes much, much more important. Okay, so I just want to show you the very, the very basic workflow with Git. Again, look at Git's documentation, but I just want to show you what it can do for you to convince you to look into it. So we can just go ahead and open the my script directory here. So I've got my script here and I can just call it with Python. And this exits with a zero, tells me hello world, and it's all well and good, lovely. So this is an empty directory right now, save for this Python script. What you would do is say git init, that initializes uh, a git repository here, and then what you could do is commit that code, basically like save a version of that code essentially in the way the state that it's in right now. So you can say git status, you can see there's one untracked file. We can add that file like this, and we can commit it. You would just modify these things. Okay, so you've set up your username and email, and then you can go ahead and commit. This will just um, read out the editor environment variable. If you don't have that set, you'll want it set. I think by default in Ubuntu it's nano. You could end up setting that to uh, 
you know, user bin subl if you want to use Sublime. But for us, we don't really care. You could just use nano. And we'll say uh, initial commit, save that. And now this is sort of saved. What happens if I screw this up? I'm screwing this up. I go ahead and save that file, run it again. And now you can see I, the code has changed. But if I do a git status, we can see that thing's been modified. But our original version still exists in git. We can see if I say git log that we've got a commit here, the initial commit. And we could do something like git show that commit to see what changed in that commit. So what we can actually just do to restore this file, this screwed up version, is to simply do git checkout my script.py. So this is going to do, this is going to reset the file content. And you can see that file content has been reset. That file has just been reverted back to the committed version. You can see Sublime automatically reloads this. So I've got my Hello World version back. Okay, so that's the very, very quick and dirty here's why you want to use version control. There's a bunch of other great reasons to use it, like collaborating with other people, being able to do code experiments safely, that kind of thing. But those are the very basics. That's kind of all you need to work on your own tiny little project by yourself. Please read the documentation on your own time. Oh my Z shell. It's a lovely project. I love the Z shell. If you want to try a shell that's not bash, I recommend Z shell. It's a lot of fun. It's very easy to install. You, we can just do this with curl. As always, I recommend that you wget this first and check the install script. I have already read through the script and I'm on a throwaway machine. And I don't have curl installed. You definitely want curl and wget installed, so I will add that to the list apt get install curl and wget. You'll use those all over the place when you're writing software, so just install them both. Looks like I only needed curl on this machine. Okay, that download and we're at the first issue, apt get install the actual Z shell. And you need to be root. It's like my first day using Linux sometimes. You ever feel that way? Like I've been doing this stuff since I was like 14 years old and yet I regularly leave the sudo off or like forget who I am on the system or do various bonehead things. What I'm trying to tell you is that you will always suck to some degree and that's that's perfectly okay. Okay, so we finally got C shell installed. Now we can go ahead and run that download command to get this download script or install script for Z shell. And you can see that it's actually just git cloning a hidden directory in my home directory. It needs uh, a bit of privilege escalation to change my default shell. My prompt has changed. I'm still Dave. This is just the Z shell prompt. Looks a little bit different from the bash prompt. I'm actually still in bash because I haven't spawned a new shell yet. But if you grab for me in Etsy password, you'll see that my shell has been changed to user bin z shell and that upon creating a new shell, maybe I have to log out and log back in. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do that. Okay, and I've logged out, logged back in again, and now any new terminals I open will have started the z shell for me and I'm using the oh my z shell uh, environment configuration. This has a couple really nice uh, advantages. There's a ton of themes you can download, which I'll show you in just a minute. But if we go into a Git repo, just by default, this thing will recognize that we're in a Git repository and show us things like which branch we're on. If we add something, something lovely to the end of this script, you'll see this change because we have changes pending in Git. That means it's basically doing a git status and seeing modified files. So you can always kind of tell what's going on very, very quickly um, 
with some of the default settings in the Oh My Z Shell setup. It's why I really like it. It is a shell change. There's a few things, there's a few differences, a few things to learn. Again, check the docs, but there's a basically no learning curve. You can do all the same stuff that you were used to. If you're interested in where that config file lives, it's just another RC file. So for us, that'll be in like bash RC. This is just Z shell RC. Lovely. So now we've got Z shell installed. It's time to talk about themes. Yes, there are a bajillion themes. Most of them are already installed. Um, well, I shouldn't say most of them. There's a ton already installed. So these are all just like in that package. They're just a config file that changes things like colors, what's displayed on the prompt, what that config file is aware of, like is it aware of Git repositories, is it aware of Python virtual ems or Ruby environments with RVM. A lot of these things can like tie into different things that you're using on your system and can be very, very, very useful. So take a look, see if you can find a color scheme that you like or something that supports features that you like. Likewise, there's a million external themes uh, like bullet train. There's a ton of them, so have a look. If you um, open up your Z shell RC file, I just applied a bash highlighting to this. So control shift P and then I just said bash. So set syntax shell script bash and that got me some, some basic highlighting. It's not, it won't be entirely accurate, but it's good enough for right now. So here's the line 10 here. It'll be at the very beginning. Here's the theme. If you want to change themes, just pick a name from the built-in themes like Bira or Blinks, whatever, and just insert it there, save, uh, and then either source Z shell RC in your current shell or just open a new shell, and you should see the theme change reflected. I hope this has been a little bit more than just apt-get install blah. I do want to explain a little bit about each tool and why we're using it and the very, very basics of how to use it. These are fairly powerful tools, and while they're easy to get started with, and that's kind of the whole point of this, they do have depth to them, so you, there's lots of fancy features that you can unlock that can make you a lot more efficient just by reading the documentation on those tools. Like Git is fairly complex, uh, but extremely powerful. Uh, same goes for Sublime. You can use it just like Word or whatever text editor you're used to using, but it's also got a bajillion amazing features inside of it. Z Shell, same thing. You can pretty much do probably everything you've been doing in Bash with it, but then it has all these other features that are very nice. In the next few videos, I'm going to be talking about setting up language-specific environments. And you've got all the basics set up for doing that. Whether you want to do Python, Java, Ruby, Go, whatever. If this has been helpful for you, uh, make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. Likewise, tell me if you've got any questions or you know, if you're just getting started programming, any other videos that you'd like to see. I'm definitely going to be making more videos again, so let me know if you've got any requests in the comments. If you're just coming to this video, you should know that I have a large and growing, I don't want to say enormous, but it's uh, its getting pretty awesome, uh, playlist with just a bunch of free basic Linux command line videos. Sort of some command line basics and then how Linux works basics. So definitely be sure to check those out. They'll be linked below. Again, the names of the tools, the commands we've seen, and the documentation links for the tools will all be in the description below. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, guys.